If I had to pick one word to describe the Jesus as presented in The Chosen, it would be joy. He's very tender and he's very joyful. Joyful, but also, this is another message we need to keep taking. A Jesus who knows what he's doing. Yeah, that's true. And knows where he's going. This is what I think we all have to keep in mind, especially today where there's such a crisis of trust and authority. There's such a sense that, oh gosh, I kind of have to figure this out on my own and what's going on and everything seems to be in flux, et cetera, et cetera. Jesus is always the same. And he always knows who he is, yeah. what he's about, and where he's going, and where he's taking us. Yes. And the more we can surrender to that truth, the more we're all going to find yeah. uh, peace and consolation in our lives. Well, we're here and we're on a new set. We have a video, we have cameras, we've got a set. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I, yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I think so. I think, uh, why are we doing this? Why, why, why are we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> what is our purpose? Should we define our purpose right now? Sure. I mean, I, you know, I just go along with this. So tell me why we're... I That's think right. It sounds like a good idea to me. But. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. We're going to be on YouTube every week, and we've done an audio oh, so podcast. This is sort of henceforth, we're going to be. On. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. I have to keep dressing up to come to work. Every and, day, yeah, you need to put on your uh, best okay. suit, and right. I was going to say tie, but I guess a pectoral no, cross work. will will do it, yep. right? Yep. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. Let's but yeah, we're going to be we're going to have a YouTube channel, and um, this is a nice studio. Yeah, it is nice. This is Matthew's work. This is our producer has been very thoughtful in putting this together. And we even have a picture of a doctor of the church who visited Edmonton right behind you. Yeah, kind of neat, huh? I know. I, every time I think of JP2, I think, wow, not only was he a pope, but he is now a doctor of the church. So. Yeah, but I can't figure out, though, we've got this beautiful photo of St. Yeah. John Paul II as the depiction of our icon for the Archdiocese, St. Yeah. Joseph. Beautiful rendition of our Lord and so on. Blessed Mother. But in the middle of it here... <laughs> Oh, yes, we have the mystery figure, who actually yeah. now I'm realizing is dead center to the set, which For wasn't sure. necessarily intentional, but... You, oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it might have been deliberate. Matthew, this, Matthew's <laughs> behind. So this... I, you, I don't, you know I who don't it is. Get it. We can't, don't, we don't... Well, yeah. we got to tell people. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Cash. It's true. Right between St. Joseph and St. John Paul II. Johnny Cash is in between you and I. <laughs> There's a story behind this. And someday, Matthew, you can fill us in. Yes, yeah, someday, yeah. someday. Don't maybe maybe show. we'll make our new theme song "Ring of Fire" or and maybe not. <laughs> and, there's, and there's also a photo of that guy over there on the other side of the studio. That's true. Matthew you can't see it, but Johnny Cash is looking at us from across the studio, yeah. and he's also behind yeah. us, before us, all, all right. around us. <laughs> so well, let's, let's see. Well, thank you to Country Music for uh, <laughs> sponsoring this episode. <laughs> Um, what has been a highlight for you over the past couple of days? It's been a while since we've been in the studio. What have you been up to, Adventures and um, Odyssey? I had a couple of uh, parish visits. I was out at uh, St. Gregory's in Holden not too long ago. Holden, okay. And just this morning, just this morning, I went up to uh, St. Albert to be with the Greater St. Albert Catholic School Board for their Mass to open the school year. Okay. So, I enjoyed. so yeah, we're starting to get back into the, the groove of things, moving out of the the summer I was going to say summer hiatus, but no, not really summer a hiatus. staying kind of busy. But any, it, it's got its own unique character. Yeah. And now moving back into the normal rhythm of the, I guess we could call the pastoral year. So yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. And so you watched The Chosen. You watched season one I of did, well, The not Chosen, the whole thing. not the no, whole thing. No, uh, you wanted to yeah. suggest that we talk about this yeah. today. Glad to. Um, yeah. And I'd heard about it. It wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And so you suggested, what well, was episodes five, seven, and eight. That's so watch right. those. Yeah. And I thought, well, to situate it for myself, I better watch the first, which, okay. I, which I've done. Okay. So, it, yeah, a very, very interesting project, interesting endeavor. You've Have you seen the whole thing? I, I have. So seasons, there's right? there's three seasons I have. I have admitted. Actually, I think I haven't watched the last two episodes of season three, but there's three okay. seasons. They're all crowdfunded. Uh, it's yeah. Very interesting endeavor, huh? Very interesting project. Yeah. Um, have you have you seen a lot of other depictions of Jesus in film? Over time. Yeah. Over time, not a lot, I'd say. Yeah. Um, this seems like a. I'm no film critic, but this seems like a good project, really. And 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 you might know more about this than I do, but I think it's attracted a lot of followers, attracted a lot of attention. 
Yeah, I think they've been the, I mean, I don't want to, Matthew might want to look this up, but in terms of the, the fact that they're crowdfunded, so the, the fact that it hasn't been so studio explain funded. explain that to me a little bit. Yeah, so it essentially means that they fundraise. You know um, how there will be, someone will have an initiative online and then people okay. can donate directly yep. to that cause in yep. order to fund it. So it's the crowd funds it as opposed to a studio paying for the oh, production. Okay, okay. So right. I think that every season is around $10 million to produce mm. and they've in, almost entirely fundraised that. Which is a sign online. that this is responding to a desire, to a need. Yeah. It's, it's, it's touching something. Yeah, it oh, is. okay. Yeah. So what did you think of their portrayal of Jesus. Of course, he's the, the central figure. Um, what did you think? I know that some people think, oh, maybe it's a little too sentimental. And when you're depicting Christ in his human form, of course, you could have the error of it being overly human and not emphasizing the divine enough. And how do we even do that, right? Yeah, because, well, okay, uh, well yeah. on the basis of the, the few episodes that I've seen, I, Strikes me that they're they're catching that balance, the human dimension, the the what I what I like about the, the human dimension that they're capturing there is his desire to be in close friendship with his followers. It, it's clear that they acknowledge him as master yeah. and lord. That's consistent and that's appropriate. Uh, but he himself said to his apostles at one point, "I call you friends," right. and, and that sense of just wanting to be in a a vibrant communion of life and of mission, and and even the way that he's Portrays, they portray the Lord as not being afraid to josh with them a little bit like friends That's would do. Experience. So I, I thought that was fine. And and certainly in the little bit that I've seen, um, the divine of Jesus, his divine um, personhood does come does come forward. Yeah. And, and it captures also his intimate communion at that level with the Father. So, okay. so I, th I think it's, it strikes me in the little bit that I've seen that they're it's good. Um, what I what I like is what they said at the very beginning of the first episode. Okay. Right? Yeah. So they said, "Listen, this is at the end of the day a, a work of what could I what could I say speculative imagining of how things might have unfolded, right? right. Because the details in the gospels are yeah. rather, rather. It definitely limited. has creative license. It doesn't doesn't have yeah. all. Of, so they're speculating what might be. Yeah. Okay, fine." Um, I think that's all done respectfully. I find the acting really good. Mm -hmm. um, but what they say at the beginning is, acknowledging all of that, but what we really want you to do is read the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And if this is a series that leads people who watch it to read the Gospels, that's great. That's Anything that can lead the people, our people, into a deeper relationship with the Word, an active relationship with God's Word, read the Gospels. Oh, Francis is always on this. To keep a small copy of the New Testament with you all the time, read the Gospels. And if this comes from that, if that, that helps to, to, to further that, I, you know, all power to them. Good. Yeah. That's interesting. So the, the producers, before the beginning of episode one, they gave some context yep, in the version that you watched. They did. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Because actually, seen that. yeah, well, you know what? There's different, different ways that you can watch The Chosen, okay. right? So they don't always have the same intros. Uh, the producers aren't always there to introdu introduce the episode. Okay. I was so, looking at the, um, for the first season, I think it, it was on Netflix. And yes. it's only that first season that's on Netflix that's where right. you go afterwards. I'm not sure, but yeah. it was in that presentation of this that, that they, the, before the first episode unfolded, yeah. they, they had a written text, the text. Okay. contextualizing the whole thing, which, oh, I, that's which I found helpful. But at the end they said, read the gospels. Wow. Okay. Cause that's what I've heard. One of the main criticisms of just, maybe not even just the chosen, but fictional depictions of Jesus in general, in general, where you could say it's leading people to Jesus, but it's not the real Jesus because there's so much, I guess you could say poetic license that perhaps people get could get attached to uh, a visual depiction of Jesus or a personality of Jesus that the scriptures don't give us that much detail. We don't know what his facial expression would have been. We don't know whether he was an introvert or an extrovert, those type of things, which something like The Chosen definitely gets into. They're developing, I wouldn't say they're overly developing his personality, so. but you could argue that, again, someone would be attached to this idea of Jesus that's in The Chosen as opposed to being sure. drawn to the and Gospels, need right? To be, need to be careful of all of that, sure. But what, what strikes me in all of this is 
Their imagination is born of love. Right? Ah, yeah. Loving Definitely. Jesus. Well, I really know. I'd love to know you more. And, and you, born of that love, how can you not kind of wonder what it might have been like? Yeah. What might it have been like to be a follower? What yeah. might it have been like actually to, to meet Jesus and to see what he did? What might that have been like? And so out of that love and desire to grow closer to the Lord, I can understand this desire to imagine and try to depict. And I, and I do find it um, striking how it depicts the power of attraction in Jesus, as well as the astonishment at what Jesus was doing. Notice in the Gospels how they often say people were left astounded, astonished, marveled. And they pick that up. I was thinking of the scene, uh, which episode? Number five, maybe? The the wedding feast at Cana. Oh, yes. And yeah. uh, <laughs> Thomas is there. Oh, yeah, Thomas. And, and everybody else <laughs> is kind of drinking this bread, this new wine that they're just kind of gushing yeah. over. It's so beautiful. It's good. It's the best. And he's left in that room staring at those <laughs> basins. What just happened, right? Yeah. Um, the astonishment. Yeah. They... So, so at, our di- at our distance of time... Are we allowing ourselves to be astonished mm. by the power, the unlimited power of Jesus Christ? And then in all of that, things were just so, what he introduced was just so radically unexpected, unanticipated, different. From, and yet, they dropped things and they followed. The power of attraction that Jesus must have exercised in their lives. Right? Mm-hmm. So I think the chosen is trying to capture all of that. Um, but in it is an invitation to us right, to allow ourselves to be astonished by Jesus um, and then allow the power of attraction of his word, his love, to take over and draw us forth. I think if we enter into it from the perspective of a fellow disciple invited to experience what they're trying to depict was experienced by, yeah. the, by the disciples, that, that, that could bear some good fruit. It's true. The series is a really good job consistently actually through all the seasons that I've seen of, of showing you that childlike, uh, yeah, shock and awe and wonder that yeah. the disciples chronically experience, yeah. right? Because of course the first season covers some iconic scenes from the gospels, but it continues. And a lot of it is the, the healings and the miracles that Jesus does. And every time they do such a good job, almost in a playful way of the disciples, any other bystanders, the Pharisees being like, Oh, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's something that I think, especially for cradle Catholics, sometimes we lose that because we've heard what well, we've heard about the wedding of Cana, right? Since right. we were babies. So it's like, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. God can turn water into wine. Sure. Great. Of course I believe that. But this type of, Precisely. it would have, it would shock you. Tr- truly. Yeah. Truly. And yeah. you know, the one who's attracting my attention in the episodes that I've uh, seen is Nicodemus. Oh yes. I, I I, I don't know if I've come across him as an actor, this individual. I just find his yeah. acting is just so good. Yeah. Um, but the way that character is developed, so what, this, what the gospel tells us, Gospel of John, is that uh, Nicodemus was attracted by Jesus. He sensed something in Jesus. And in the end, he became a, a disciple, but a secret one, mm-hmm. right, for fear of the Jewish authorities. And then this series tries to develop all of that. So here's a man well-versed in the Torah, well-versed in the Jewish law, one of the esteemed teachers. Um, And yet as he's hearing about Jesus, as he talks to Jesus, he allows his own mind and his own understanding to be challenged. That in itself is remarkable. Because so, so many people around him were saying, things are set. This is is what is. And yet what his encounter with Jesus was allowing him to come to terms and to admit a searching within himself, a, a sense, a glimmering sense of, of a yet to be completed in everything that he had been taught and was teaching. Um, and then his personal encounter with Jesus and his deep, deep desire actually to be a follower, but he couldn't get there. And then, and then the Lord at one point in the episode saying, oh, gee, you came so close, right? Um, we have, we have to be so, so careful in our own lives not to have our understanding set in stone, unable to be changed, unable to be challenged, to allow the light of God's word 
to penetrate into all of our understandings, our assumptions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that it, he brings us to the understanding of his truth, mm-hmm. of his revelation that he wants us mm-hmm. uh, really to grasp. But to put ourselves in the shoes of Nicodemus and everything that he was going through as depicted by the Chosen yeah. also, I think, can be a, a good fruit that could, could come from watching this series. Yeah, especially with the character of Nicodemus, I loved how they they show you his humility because yeah. he's he's yeah. a he's a prestigious member of the Pharisees yep. and is seen as a wisdom figure. He's idolized by a lot of the younger. Honored. You bet. The yeah, words. but he has this he willingness to be childlike, and he seems to recognize quite early on. Oh, this yeah. is I need to I need to be humble in the face of this yeah. man Jesus, and then he recognizes him as God, as we know from yeah. the scriptures. Uh, and I, I appreciated that because he didn't have to be humble. There could have been more of a battle, but I find that he yeah. he embraces that childlike humility very quickly. And it's and especially that scene on the rooftop between Jesus. Oh, that's uh, remarkable. No spoilers, but that is it's one of my really, favorite really scenes well in all done. of the seasons. Yeah, I, that that really struck me. Yeah, um, I think too he depicts the struggle with separation. Okay. That comes when you encounter Jesus Christ, right? Okay. So all of the apostles as they were called forth to follow him, separated themselves, had to separate themselves from, from the familiar, from everything that they'd been part of. Um, uh, the, the, the way Matthew gets separated, realizes he needs to separate from so, so much that had become part of his yeah. life that really had defined him. Yeah. But then with Nicodemus, right, he didn't quite get there because of the separation that would have been involved in becoming a follower and everything that that would have meant in terms of the reaction of family, uh, religion, and all these sorts of things. So if we look at that right, and uh, ponder this, not, not, not just the series, the chosen, but obviously pondering what the, what the Gospels themselves relate, what, uh, how am I with the, the separation that will inevitably come? Mm-hmm. Right? We'll all experience it differently, but that will inevitably come. Yeah. Uh, when we when we become a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah, you see that too. In season one, it, it develops a lot more in the other seasons, but the unique dynamic between St. Peter and his wife, right? Yeah. Which, of course, yeah. is not scriptural. I mean, we I think it's understood that most of the disciples would have had wives or families, and I, I believe St. Peter did. Yes. But we don't know her name as far as I understand. Right. Maybe there's a right. tradition around it, but she's a f- fictional character in the series, and I... I find it interesting the parallel of their marriage and their their grappling with Peter's calling mm-hmm. and his wife mm-hmm. is, and you see little flickers of that in this first yeah. season. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, it's it's really endearing, but it also explores that tension of when you're called by Christ. Um, there's sacrifices that you're making, but also that uh, the people close to you are making, for right? Sure, for sure. Yeah, especially even people, as yeah. at the same time they're invited into the sacrifice. Yes. Right? So it's it's all speculation. I know. Yeah. There's a point in which Jesus looks at her and says, you have a role to play in all of this, it's which, true. which just uh, caused her face to light up. Yeah. Right? So, and I thought it was tasteful because some Christian or Catholic filmmakers, I think sometimes they can artificially insert messaging maybe related to a secular feminism, a feminism that's not informed by right. Christianity that ends up making a film corny or even just strays away well, from I, a Christian I, I spirit. But I didn't. Done. It was, it was yeah. sort of born out of that sense of, yeah. how did this work? How did this play out? Right? Yeah, I thought it was cute. I don't think no. that they did, had, yeah, I agree. So I thought it was, thought it was good. Yeah, no, I, really I think good it's job. well worth uh, looking at. And uh, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll take a look Continue at the other episodes. Watching. Yeah, sure. it really, I think so. really is worth it. Uh, another thing that I, I'm curious about. I'd love to know, by the way, I'd love to know. Uh, I don't think we could ever do it for this <laughs> yeah. podcast, but I'd love to sit down and chat with those actors. That would. What oh, was it like for Matthew? you? Matthew? <laughs> yeah. well, Let's it? work our connections. <laughs> oh, really, though? What was that it would like be wonderful. for them? Yeah. I'll put that on my list. Yeah. Put it on your list. Okay. Jonathan Rumi, uh, Forgive me if I'm... He plays Jesus. He plays Jesus. So he was actually at World Youth Day in Portugal. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Well, he it wasn't at all of the events, but he was at one particular... There was a huge ecumenical concert co-hosted by Catholic artists and uh, artists from other Christian denominations. And he was there, and I believe he did an interview. He played drums. So he's a Catholic, right? So that's a really unique part of the series is that 
uh, the producers are not Catholic. Mm. They're of different Christian denominations, but the man who was cast as Jesus is Catholic, okay. and he's boldly so. If well, you follow him... It'd be wonderful to chat with him in here. I'd, yeah. also, I'd also like... Uh, I shouldn't be saying these things, but we may, <laughs> may not be able to do it, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, setting the, the expectations. The man who played... I forget his name. Yeah. The man who played Nicodemus. Oh, yes. My, oh, my. He's just so compelling, his acting. Uh, I'd love to have a chat. And what Noted. Was like for him? Noted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's... Interesting, too, because, of course, the series is called The Chosen, which I thought was a tasteful approach to telling the story of Jesus because they really, it's through, it's Jesus's story, the gospels through the lens of the lives of the apostles yeah. and, and those close to them, hence The Chosen. But I think they also, in a sense, avoid over-fictionalizing Jesus because, again, they're focused on the apostles. There's a lot, there is still a lot of mystery that they leave with Jesus. And I mean, you've just seen the first season, but I've seen in all three of the seasons, they, it, they're they minimalist in his depiction of him. They're not overly adding unscripted moments or nuances into his personality that we couldn't know. Like they do allow it to be a very simple uh, characterization of him, well, they're diving deeper and deeper into the details of the apostles' lives, right? Which I think there's a sense of it's okay to have more fiction around, for instance, St. Peter and his wife. Well, sure, but it also, I'm glad you're raising this, yeah. because it really does highlight, I think, probably the the reasoning behind uh, the choice of that title and the, and the whole purpose of oh, the yeah. series, because it invites everybody who's watching to realize that I, too, am chosen. Virtue of my baptism, or for, for, fundamentally, but possibly also in virtue of further calling, I'm chosen right? yeah. uh, to enter into that awareness. Right? And, and what does that mean? And I, um, am I willing to have my life turned <laughs> upside down? You really see that in the show, how it kind you know, of flips. For sure, but also yeah. in all of that, with all the struggles, yeah. finding this joy. This yeah. joy, just being in the presence, this transformative joy that's, that comes from being in the, just in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. I grew up with uh, uh, Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth. Have you seen? I Jesus? did. Oh, that's a long time ago. It's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. That was magnificent. Yeah. That was ma but a very the, different characterization very, of Jesus. Very He's much. very, I think they tried to capture in that one, maybe the, the divine a little bit more because he has this kind of. I would describe it as a little bit spacey Jesus. Like he's, he has this mis know, mystical I sense. I don't remember you know, it as spacey. What I okay. remember it is, is capturing how utterly unique Jesus yes, is. They definitely go for the unique. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah. Uh, clearly he is. Yeah. Right? The <laughs> yeah. eternal son of God. Eternal, <laughs> yeah. right? The Lord's listening to us being like, wow, they just described me as unique. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus, a very unique man. <laughs> unique in hist clearly, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I thought that was captured by that. And this, this, yeah. this de depiction is, uh, is, yes, it's that. But it's the, it's the closeness, the intimacy that the Lord wants to have with his followers. I would, if followers. I had to pick one word to describe the Jesus as presented in the Chosen, it would be joy. He's very tender and he's very yeah. joyful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think in a sentimental way. I know some people say, "Oh, I think he's it's a little bit like soft Jesus," but I don't. I didn't, oh, I didn't see it that, that way. Up. I thought it was just very joyful, steady strength. Joyful, yeah. but also this is another message we need to keep taking: a Jesus who knows what he's doing. He's, yeah, that's and knows true. where he's going. Yeah. Right? This is what I think we all have to keep in mind, especially today where there's such a crisis of trust and authority. There's such a sense that, oh gosh, I kind of have to figure this out on my own and what's going on and everything seems to be in flux, et cetera, et cetera. Jesus is always the same. And he always knows who he is, yeah. what he's about, and where he's going and where he's taking us. Yes. And the more we can surrender to that truth, the more we're all going to find peace and consolation in our lives. He One, knows what he's about. Yeah, you're right. They do depict that confidence, especially since he's constantly being dogged by questions and worries and everyone's like, what the heck is going on? Well, remember the scene when he, they were traveling off somewhere? They're just getting going as a group. Oh, yeah. This was last episode of the first season, I think. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, so they've got their map. Yes. And here's where we're going. Oh, and yeah. And all of a sudden, Jesus takes a turn. He goes, where are you going? No, no, this is the... Yeah. I know where I'm going. You follow, right? But you're going to Samaria. What are you doing? <laughs> they're so, arguing the audacity. I laughed audacity. so hard in that scene because you're thinking, 
this is God. How are you? But we all do that, right? But we, we all we all map, uh, presume that we can map out our lives. Yeah. And well, that God doesn't somehow Jesus know direction. better, right? Like there's, even when he's clear, it. we're like, no, we know. And then there's that yeah. encounter with the, the woman at the well and where he says to her, I've come here for you. So the, the foreknowledge, everything else, Jesus knew what he was about and knew the needs of this woman. He went there for her. Yeah. You follow me. I'm, I'm, setting the, I'm setting the direction. What did, oh, you th- what did you think of the depiction of Mary? Especially Wedding of Cana. That's a, a, an episode that... Oh, I loved it. I yeah? loved it because, oh, you know, yeah. this, this, this sense of the um, Jesus acting at the encouragement of his mother. Yeah. Right? That, that came across very well. But then... Of course, Mary turns around right away and says to everybody else, do whatever he tells you, not yeah. what I tell you. Do what he tells you. So it, it, it's directing everybody to him, but at the same time depicting this unique relationship between Jesus and, and his, blessed, his blessed mother, our blessed mother. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and so even there, and, it, and it's evident in the gospel, it's evident in, in, that, uh, in that episode, the, the intercessory power mm. of Mary. Oh, that's a good way. Of right? Which is yeah. still the case. Right? We trust that she has this wondrous relation with Jesus that makes her intercession with her son very effective. Mm-hmm. Right? And we trust and we rely on that. Mm-hmm. I, thought, I thought that came out well. She saw the problems, right? And she went to him. You need to do something about this. Yeah. And, and our blessed mother from heaven today, she looks around, sees the problems, sees us. Right, all that we need. She's our mother. She goes to her son. You got to do something about this. It's interesting because the producers, director, producers of Chosen have they've hosted a lot of conversations with different scripture scholars on YouTube, um, including many different Catholic priests, right? And they've had discussions, understanding that, of course, when you're using scripture as your primary text for any type of production. There's differences in interpretation depending on denomination, right? And of course, the Catholicism has a very specific, um, uh, very specific theology and doctrine in terms of how we interpret Scripture and who has authority to interpret, right? And the depiction of Mary, which you don't see actually in any of the proper seasons of the Chosen, but they, the director was known for doing uh, an episode of Jesus's life that shows the birth of Christ. Mm. And in this particular project that he'd done before The Chosen started, Mary experiences pain in childbirth, right? And so there, I remember seeing this interview that was really, it was really interesting because, of course, the, the Catholic theologian that was in this conversation was actually offering the Catholic teaching that we don't believe Mary would have experienced pain in childbirth, right? And... Um, of course they were so open and intrigued by that because it hadn't even, I don't think it had occurred to them that there wouldn't have been pain. So I thought, I mean, I think that the whole project of the chosen is this interesting dialogue between those who love scripture, um, Christian and otherwise Catholics and Christians, because there's sometimes these details that are being brought into the conversation, uh, in a, uh, because we're discussing the narrative, mm-hmm. it's not just a battle of theology. Sometimes it can be uncomfortable, understandably so, because people are asserting different um, uh, different beliefs about the interpretation of Scripture. But I love that The Chosen is this, because, again, it's focusing on the storytelling aspect of mm-hmm. this. It, I think it, um, it takes down some of the defenses that um, – different people can have and opens conversations, right? Which is, which in itself is wonderful. If, if this um, way of promoting the gospels yeah. can lead all Christians into a deeper dialogue with one another yeah. in relationship to our own calling yeah, and the calling that the Lord for which the Lord has chosen us, then all the better. Yeah. And like you said, especially since they're contextualizing the whole series by saying, go read the gospel. Yeah. So as these seasons develop, if there were scenes or elements of the characterization of Jesus where a viewer was thinking, I don't know, I don't know if that's aligned with truth. Ultimately, it is a TV show, right? It's not, it. there's, scripture hasn't been amended. <laughs> oh, no. Right. I, I think it's clear that they, yeah. they start from what's given in scripture yeah. and then say, well, I wonder what might have happened around that. What might have been some of the more of the details, right? Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Was there anything else, just as we're closing, anything else that stood out to you in those episodes that you watched um, that really really caught you? I was quite taken. This would have been in the uh, first episode and the subsequent with the, with the character of Mary Magdalene. 
I think it captured well the torments that, that she was living and the complete, utter transformation that came about in her life because of the healing that Jesus alone was able to give her. I thought that was rather well and dramatically portrayed. Um, no, and, and it also showed, and, and this was part of the whole journey of Nicodemus, it also showed how she was certainly beyond any human help, right? And yes. she knew it, and I think it was part of her own despair. And there's a very powerful moment in which they depict her as you know, contemplating suicide on the edge of that cliff, right? Yes. We called back um, at the, so beyond any human help, but not beyond the help that Jesus can give. Yeah. And none of us is ever beyond. We can, we can just feel like nothing is available to help whatever our problem is. Um, but we're never, ever beyond the reach of the mercy of Jesus Christ and his healing power. And I think that that can be a very helpful message also that gets uh, sent to us in, in the person of Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no spoilers, but the fact that they start this whole series, episode one, with the narrative of Mary Magdalene, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's significant it's mercy. It's a good signal, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Matthew, do you have any questions? I do. Um, I want to pick up on your comments on Nicodemus, Your Grace, mm -hmm. because you kind of contrast the <clears throat> the way the apostles leave everything and follow Jesus, and Nicodemus is invited to in uh, in the in the chosen, and kind of, he does, but in a secret kind of yep. more hidden way. There is a contrast between kind of the youth of the apostles of when they're called, and Nicodemus is an older man. Mm. Um, oh, that's a good point. And on that point, do you, uh, it, do you think that's a, a factor in, in, in our faith life, that, that kind of the, the point at which the gospel reaches us, when we're older, we may have a lot more kind of connections to things that may hinder us from completely, completely diving into the gospel or, or into a missionary kind of stance. Um, and it kind of connects with my as I'm thinking about this, the vocation to the priesthood is often an invitation to younger, younger men. Mm -hmm. oh, is there yeah. a connection there? What, 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 what would you say to that? Well, I think it's a good observation because the longer we live, the more we develop our so-called certainties and our presumptions, ways of doing things, ways of living. Yeah. Um, and out of which it can be very, very difficult to break. So yeah, there's, I think there's that dynamic for sure. But I would, I would take us back to the point that Jesus always knows what he's doing. And he knows when to give the call. And so I think the, I think the fundamental consistency is when that call is experienced, what is he asking me to sacrifice at that moment? And am I willing to do it in faith and in love and in trust? So that, that would be the consistent thread. Uh, it's going to be experienced differently at different stages in one's life, depending. But Jesus always knows the right moment to act, always. So if it's coming at a certain point in my life, right? What's going on, and how how am I called to respond with with faith and and, and total surrender? That's a good point, actually. And this it will relate to what Matthew was saying. If if any at any age, whether you're in your twenties, thirties, forties, fifties and you receive some sort of calling to the Lord, whether it's a vocational call or whether it's just a, a call to a specific type of mission, do you believe that someone could have, do you believe that we can mess up God's timing in any way? You know, because I think some of us can struggle with that insecurity of saying, I should have done this 20 years ago. Why didn't I do oh, it? You know, I should have. Well, again, this goes back to what it depicts in the relationship between Jesus and Nicodemus in, in, in the calling and the reaching out of the Lord to us. Mm -hmm. There's always his complete respect for our freedom. That's all part of the mystery, right? right? So yeah. remember there's that, his encounter with the, the young rich man, right? And he says, here's what you need to do. Here's your call. Here's what you need to do to follow me. And the rich man said, ah, no, I can't do that. Walked away. And Jesus watched him walk away. Mm -hmm. Watched him walk away, yeah. respecting his freedom. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think we need to hold on also to the truth that the Lord never gives up on us, right? It's not just a, a once, right? And I, you say, no, okay, I'm finished with you. That's it. Yeah. You had your chance. No, no, no. What's the phrase we use? The hound of heaven. Jesus is oh, the yes. hound of heaven. He keeps coming. He keeps, he keeps reaching out to us. He never gives up. And so we can expect that the call, if 
where that, a genuine call is going to come back to us again and again and again. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, there's going to come a point when we just have to say, I got to deal with this. Mm-hmm. Now it might be to a particular way of life, might be to a ministry, or it might be just a call to wake up mm-hmm. and become a disciple, wake up and embrace the truth of who Jesus is and give your life over to him mm-hmm. in the circumstances that you're already living, right? mm-hmm. which itself can bring about, will bring about yeah. very dramatic changes. Well, thanks for this conversation. Oh, I'm glad yeah. you. I'm glad you raised it up. Yeah. I'm glad you invited me to to look Watch at those episodes. Series. It's not something I might have done on my own at this time. So I'm glad I did. That's yeah, so and I'm excited to even hear what our different listeners think of of the chosen. Even yeah. in the comment section, just um, this is of course. I think it's going to continue to be a big point of cultural conversation. I hope Christian, so because I the series so. are continuing. They're, yeah. it's well, that's they're, good if it's yeah. if it's crowdfunded, as you say. It's obviously yep. touching a nerve. Um, that's right. But I would just say in all of it. As the series unfolds, whatever that's going to look like in the future, just remember what they said at the very start. Mm-hmm. Look at it, read it, see how it might be speaking to you. But at the end of the day, go to the Gospels and read them. Yeah. yeah. I do have a, uh, a bit of a fact check. Oh, on, yes. Uh, fact on our, check. On our host. <laughs> <laughs> at the beginning of this, we were talking about JP2. Uh, he is not, in fact, a doctor of the church yet. Oh, he isn't. I, no, you know what I was thinking? Oh, sorry, I we both didn't catch, catch that. that. Oh, <laughs> he is a saint, but not yet a doctor. Oh, he's a Wait, is that an investigation? Am I off my rocker? Uh, no, he, no, he's not formally been declared. I mean, I, I would not at all be surprised. <laughs> That's so funny. I, in someday. my head, I've been thinking of him well, as I a mean, doctor of the church. Effectively, he is. Right? He His is, body right. Teaching is okay, that's funny. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, he's a saint, so that's... Good catch. Good catch there, Matthew. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, it's great. I And I hope that you continue to watch it, and maybe we'll uh, catch up on further notes on sure. how this how this series right. unfolds. So, great. Yeah, it's great. Thanks. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you found it helpful along your, your journey of faith. Please know that I'm praying for you, and if you would, be so kind as to pray for us also. Every blessing to you. God bless.